Hey everyone and welcome back to another Flow Ninja video. In this one we're gonna be going over on how you can get over the limit of 10,000 characters in your custom code section on Webflow, upload the code to AVS and then, then upload the code directly from your visual code editor tool to AVS and speed up your process of dev development that much more. So let's jump straight into it. So, I mean, many people have problems with Webflow that when you want to write custom code and specifically when going on more and more and more enterprise projects, you're going to write a lot more custom code than usual. Encounter that kind of the Webflow editor is not going to be the greatest tool for your JS. You're going to constantly fix something, then publish, then wait for Webflow to publish, then reload, and then basically instead of working for let's say six hours on the project let's say two hours you're just waiting on the publish and seeing does the code work and you're also not gonna spot many errors and like just gonna have a systematic way of writing js and that's why using a tool like visual code or main visual studio i mean and many other uh, tools that are available this is the process we can are using at flow ninja agency for our projects but you can also upload the codes to i mean github or like many other tools but we just started with avs s3 bucket and like that has been a game changer for us this video we're going to show what we usually do at the very first step of starting a webflow project and that is uh, setting up a new uh, kind of s3 bucket place where we're going to be writing the code saving the code automatically without any version histories because at the moment we're probably going to just be writing a bunch of code and then just kind of iterating it quickly so we're not going to be doing commits that's going to be that's going to have the whole process of the video so the first things first uh, let's go ahead first to avs on our side we do have an avs uh, account already set up but you're just going to go to avs amazon and just create a new account that's going to be pretty straightforward after that the next thing we're going to be doing is downloading uh, visual studio code basically as we're on macbook i'm going to be downloading the macbook version in the meantime we can start the kind of management part of uh, creating an account that we're going to use in order to upload to abs by going to i am or like you can go here i am e we can get to the place where we have user groups users roles and stuff like that i mean as your agency grows as your business grows i mean if you're a webflow developer you're gonna have more and more of these, but let's go ahead and here just as a test. The top right, we wanna go ahead and add a new user. In this case, let's do it like ninja tutorial. Oh, okay, ninja dash tutorial. We need the access key in this case. You can also enable the password uh, if you wanna like uh, if you want to do more things later on with this user from your Visual Studio Code Editor. But at the moment, the most important thing we're gonna need is the access key. But let's also add a custom password uh, uh, here. Show password information something like that. But in at this type step, we're not gonna be using that. But yeah, but just to make sure. Uh, then disable user must create a new password here on permissions. We're gonna add existing policies. So in this case, we're going to need administrator access. And then if you go here, I am. We're going to need to check I am self-managed service specific credentials. And then just save this one. Let me close this one out. Next, we're going to go to tags. We don't need anything here. Next, we just know that kind of we create a user, create a user, wait a bit. And now we're here. The most important uh, thing at this uh, this point is to go ahead and kind of you're gonna see a CSV file to download. May want to make sure that you have a secure place for storing this. I mean, because this is gonna be a test uh, video, we're just gonna download a CSV. I'm gonna show you all of the access key IDs, secret key IDs, and delete that after the video. But just for an example, download CSV, and we have that. Next thing is let's go ahead and install our Visual Code Editor. We have our Visual Studio working. First things first, when we open the Visual Studio, is we want to go to here, to Extensions, and we want to go AVS. You're going to see that the toolkit for AVS is the most important uh, kind of plugin, extension, or whatever you want to call that most people are using. So let's open AVS toolkit and install it. You can see that right now, we just installed the AVS tool, we have the Explorer, like depending on if this is the first time you're installing it, it might go through a wizard. That's going to be a little bit easier for to set up your new account. But in our case, I just went ahead and deleted everything that we had previously. And I'm just kind of creating a new explorer here um, for the video. We want to go ahead and show AVS commands. And then you can create, 
credentials profile. When we are at this place, you can copy the link from here, go to your browser, press enter, scroll down to the, a little bit, you're gonna see this. We can get back to our AVS, press enter, and this is gonna be our um, kind of, this is the, the place where we're adding the, the new account credentials. Basically, opening the credential file we have, okay, let's move this around. Our username is Ninja Tutorial. Our access key ID is this one. And our secret access key is this one. Like this. We want to go ahead to file and then save. Now this is saved and we can close it out. Next thing is we want to choose an AVS profile and open Ninja Tutorial. So you can see that right now kind of basically it's pretty straightforward. Kind of we're having the explorer on the left. We can go to S3. It's going to fetch our bucket. It's going to fetch all of our projects. And then also I, I've previously created a new kind of subfolder here. I mean, we can even uh, delete this one if you want to, or just create a new folder here. Let's create a folder name like um, Ninja Tutorial. Create. You can see that automatically from our uh, kind of Visual Code Studio, kind of we're up creating new items in our AVS. The problems we had previously is before we actually found this out that it works in this way is that we were usually editing the code in visual code, saving it and then uploading it to AVS and then waiting for that process to happen and only then checking how it works in Webflow. And this way we're not gonna need to do any of those things uh, because it's gonna be uh, uh, kind of syncing automatically. So next step is I'm gonna be uploading a script from our computer. Let's go ahead and like, for example, like one of the scripts we have that is more than 10,000 lines of code. We have Hive pricing here, for example. I mean, like I can press here, it's gonna reload the page and now I can start writing. So I can do test, whatever, test the uh, YouTube video. I mean, I can do cons to, I, I guess, flow ninja equals, uh, for example, document query selector, whatever, all, whatever, like everything's gonna be working. If I go file, save, you can see that the ABS is gonna upload for a bit and now our form like even if i close it out and get back to that one that's that's the live version the only thing you're gonna need to do right now is because we've set up a new link but this link doesn't have public permissions we're gonna get back to our avs to the management console go to services go to s3 we're gonna see our flow ninja bucket scroll down a little bit just to see ninja tutorial this is our script go to permissions go to edit and everyone can have the access for this one it's gonna say i understand basically we're gonna give access for anybody to actually see the objects and for us to be able to use this code on our website i understand and then save the changes so uh, right now uh, we're gonna be able to open the code on our browser you can remove all of the response content from the right and everything is gonna be working. You can see our whole code that has 10,000 and more lines of code. And we can get back to our project and see that, okay, we have a problem. We have 11K characters, but right now we're gonna be able to remove everything from here. Uh, we're gonna be able to add a script here, paste the script inside of like from our S3 bucket, save, and we don't have to worry about anything. The way we're usually doing it is that, for example, like if we have this script, we're not even gonna be pasting it here, but we're gonna go to project settings. We're gonna go to custom code. Uh, and then in our head of the project, we're gonna paste in the script and that's gonna be our script for the project. I mean, depending on like how big the differences on the codes you're going to be using for the project, et cetera, et cetera, are going to be uh, kind of, you can maybe use it per page or maybe per the whole project, but we like setting up rules. Like if something is project based, based kind of, we set up everything on a project based, then we add the rules uh, kind of for run this code only on this specific URL, run this code only on this specific URL. And we have a single line of command for everything. Go ahead and make sure that we can do basically anything we want to on the code. We can go ahead, file, save, and then we don't have to press publish on Webflow. The only thing we're gonna need to do is when we access the page, 
we're gonna need to press command shift R to hard reset the page and we're gonna be fetching our code from AVS directly and all of the latest changes that we have. Hopefully this is gonna make your uh, JS kind of journey a lot easier on Webflow because I know many of us started Webflow first, maybe we didn't have experiences in front end as these are some more kind of standard front end procedures that people are doing. But in this case, you're gonna become a much better Webflow developer and deploy your JS code that, e that much easier for every single one of your projects. So I know that many people have many different way of doing this and kind of it's only the beginning of Webflow. So kind of it might be uh, that some people have even more advanced techniques for this. And later on, we're of course jumping into kind of version history and stuff like that. So I would love every for everyone to, to kind of drop a comment below on how, kind of how you're managing your JS code in Webflow and kind of what's the process you're using in order to manage uh, kind of every single one of your Webflow projects with custom code. Looking forward to chatting more in the next video and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.